Hello and welcome to Diatribes from the Voice of Doom. And now, your host for this evening, the Voice of Doom. Alright, thanks. Thanks everybody for, for your support of this show. I really appreciate it. For your warm responses and interest. Um seventh episode today and I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, I the first six went well. Seventh is always a auspicious number. Seven's always been, you know, spiritual. You got your seven C's, seven days, you know, seven eleven, seven come eleven, you know, whatever. It's a good number. The other numbers are alright. But uh Seven very special. So I thought I'd celebrate my seventh episode. You know, the staff got me a little Debbie's. If you can see it. Cinnamon roll. Movies. So that was nice of them. We'll celebrate with that later. But yeah, the show's going well. I got a lot done in the first six episodes. What did I do? Talked about politics. Talked about the war. I talked about war in general, the literature, I explained the meaning of life, I solved the political problem, if you listen to me, and pretty much gave a few tips on how we could end war once and for all, so got quite a bit done for six episodes, I'm pretty happy, pretty satisfied with what I've done. Uh, but we're going to continue because the more I get into this uh, diatribing and uh, ranting, uh, it's like there's no end to it. I could go on forever. To your dismay, I'm sure. But at any rate, <clears throat> what's the subject for today? We're going to kind of switch gears from war in a way. Cause my next subject I decided was going to be uh, hypocrisy because it's just. I see with the media, when I see with the politicians and hypocrisy, it's I mean, annoying to say the least, irritating, maddening, infuriating, and you can't do a damn thing about it. It's like, you know, it's an argument like Monty Python or something, you know. I know you are, but what am I? I know I am, whatever. It's just ridiculous going back duplicity going back and forth you know just to suit whatever ends they have I didn't say that of course you said it you know you have it on tape that you said it well uh, the tape was uh, either doctored I haven't seen it but I'm sure it's out of context but we have the whole tape from when you walked in the door uh, I'm sure it was the Russians that doctored it so enjoy you know it's whatever they can always once you're backed up against the wall you just say the Russians did it and then um, you know, hope you can get out of the interview. But I'm getting off the subject. Hypocrisy. When I really looked into it, I realized, well, hypocrisy is actually not as prevalent as I thought when you really analyze it. I'm pretty boring. I mean, I can start delving into crap. I'm looking at hypocrisy and I'm like, that is when you preach something to somebody and then do the exact opposite, or do the thing that you're, you know, preaching against, or whatever. It has to do with communication and, you know, word and deed, and I'm looking, I'm thinking about, you know, when, when have I been a hypocrite? I mean, it seems like everybody's been a hypocrite, but it's not really like I go around, nobody should smoke, nobody should drink, horrible, and I'm like, you know, whatever, you know. It's like, look at this guy. I mean, it's ridiculous. You have no credibility. I can't really think about... You know, I'm thinking, eh, maybe hypocrisy is not the word. So, I invented a couple new words because I realized that we didn't have the words for what's going on. So, I have to make them up. So, that's the second thing I was going to do after talking a little bit about hypocrisy. Third thing is maybe try to find an example of hypocrisy in the government is really hard. It's combing the internet. I mean, I really had to t 
delve deep to find examples of hypocrisy from politicians. But I have a few. I, I, I came up with something. So let's go on. Let's just talk about hypocrisy. I mean, I don't want to delve into anything because I don't know anything. You know, I know a little bit about everything and not a lot about anything, so it's my opinion of hypocrisy is it's like two kinds of hypocrisy. There's obvious hypocrisy or I might call it manifest hypocrisy and that's like, you know, the guy who talks about living on air I mean, years ago and like, you can live on air and See, he's got a bunch of bags of potato chips and stuff. So that kind of obvious hypocrisy. But then there's kind of a implied hypocrisy. And that's harder to pin down because sometimes you just have to assume that they're being a hypocrite. Because, you, just, you know, it's hard to explain. I mean, it's like, you would have done this if it had happened this way, or you would have said this, you know, you know you're right, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it's like implied hypocrisy, so. And that's just something I kind of came up with, you know, and things like, you know, being a hypocrite, you know, you're not going to be trusted, and you have no integrity. So basically, you know, if you're going to act like that and just say one thing and then do another or say one thing and then say another, that's the hypocrisy that's, you know, going back and forth, duplicity. It's like, well, what are people, duplicitous or are they hypocrites, you know? It's like, let me look at my dictionary. It's got to be a better word. It's like, now, people are so bizarre today that we need to actually make up new words because you can't describe their idiocy with common verbiage. It's impossible. The words aren't there. So i got to make those up too. One more thing to do, but I did make up a couple words. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, actually, it's seven minutes, so maybe I should talk about the words. Like, what's a word that... You know, means like super hypocrite or this blatant hypocrite. It's like, well, there's manifest hypocrite, and then there's, you know, the implied hypocrite. But what about the hypocrite that knows the other guy knows that you're a hypocrite, and you know, and he knows, and we all know you're being a hypocrite, and they do it anyway. I mean, that's beyond calling somebody a like, so I came up with one. It's actually a pretty good word. I'm kind of happy with it. I'll call Webster. Let's see if I can get it in there. I, I had to horse around a bit. I'm like, well, what about a super hypocrite? That's, no, that's stupid. Ultra hypocrite. And it's like, no, because it's still being a hypocrite. It doesn't really describe the evil malevolence. So, I finally stumbled across, you know, hyper hypocrite. That's kind of catchy, but it's a good title for a song, maybe. But finally came up with a word. I combined two words together that seemed to make sense. It took me a couple minutes, you know, I really had to work hard on it. Uh, so the word is called impunicrit. God, you're an impunicrit. We're so full of impun impunicris. No, I can't even pronounce it. Impunicracy. That's going to be a hard one. The impunicracy is horrible. You're totally impunicrit. You get used to it. Impunicrit. Say it ten times fast. Impunicrit. Impunicrit. It's a hypocrite with impunity. It's very simple. It's a, just a total curve. It's a feeding treacherous, two-faced Democrat, you know, I mean, impunicrit, it's really a good word, I like it. I'm sure it's going to be in common usage in about five minutes after I post this, but I like the word, impunicrit, you're an impunicrit, you're hopeless, you're, you talk out both sides of your mouth, you'll say whatever, we want to get rid of the police, it's like, uh, people don't really like that, oh, they said they want to get rid of the police, we didn't say that. You say anything like that. We love the police. You know, I mean, come on. That's an impunicrit. It's a good word. So, <clears throat> in impunicracy, it's hard to pronounce, but I like it. Um, so, those are the words that I'm going to enter into the lexicon because I'm going to have to come up with my own words to describe the madness. There's not enough words in the dictionary, so. 
Mm -hmm. Backtrack a bit and talk about a phrase that I remember hearing when I was about seven. I do as I say, not as I do. It's like hypocrisy. I mean, it's blatant hypocrisy. And even at seven, I didn't like that. I thought there was something a little wrong with that. Do as I say, not as I do. Usually came from parents or adults. Or someone like a babysitter or whatever, somebody in charge. You didn't go up to your friend and go, do as I say, not as I do. And it's like, ah, see ya, bye. You know? Um, but, yeah. I, my parents never really said it. Uh, but I've heard it when I was young. And later when I fiance's mother said it outright. She said, do as I say, not as I do. But uh, I didn't care for it because I thought, you know, you have no credibility. You have no, you know, you're the one that's weak. You know, why, you know, why do you have to tell me what to do and then you do it? And then I became a parent. And I realized that, you know, you got to be a hypocrite sometimes because I caught I didn't say do as I say, not as I do, but I realized that it's not all that cut and dried because I wanted my kids to do as I say and not as I do because I wasn't the most perfect person in the world and I wanted them to be better than me. So I can see, you know, you know, it's not a real simple subject. You got to really kind of think about it a bit. Do as I say, not as I do. It sounds irritating, but then when you become in charge, it's kind of like, uh, I'm not going to say that, but it's implied. You know, 17 years old, and I'm smoking a cigarette or whatever, and I do as I say, not as I do. I don't smoke, and it's like, yeah, Dad, thanks. I mean, you know, it's stupid, but it's the way it is. Um, so, hypocrisy, you know. A little example how maddening, so maddening. Literally trying to infuriate everybody. I call it impunicracy. So we had this election, 2020. Fiasco. It's a joke. Uh, we will speak of such things later. The point is, we had something that was kind of like an election in 2020. It's beautiful for the Democrats because. They could cheat with impunity. Um, you know, was, we had like eight ballots on our kitchen table. You know, we got absentee ballots in there that we didn't ask for. And we have mail-in ballots that we didn't ask for. So I knew, you know, everybody knows that it's going to be a mess. So we had the election on November 20th, I believe, or somewhere in there. And then we got the returns three weeks later, Started, they started to dribble in. And we started counting the votes, and it looked like, you know, I, mean, I didn't think that somebody like Biden could possibly be elected. It was beyond my comprehension or my capacity to understand that anybody would vote for him, so I wasn't too worried about the election, but all of a sudden I'm looking at the TV set and I'm like, What's, what is this electoral thing with Biden here? I mean, it's like, I wasn't really paying attention because I didn't, I assumed he'd, blow, you know. Well, Biden won, I got, you know. Apparently Biden won. Everybody's accepting the fact that Biden won. I mean, Trump didn't hole up in the White House and, you know, ward off everybody. So Biden won and noticed there was a lot of discrepancies in the election and it's like, um, this one state sent their electronic ballots to Romania or some crap like that. And there's people finding piles of ballots in trunks and they're losing them and finding them and every state has an issue. And it's like, you know, the Democrats are like, no, no, no. We don't have to look at any of these states or any of these state election laws or their procedures. America is pure as the driven snow. Our elections are sacrosanct. Nobody... Russians, no, they, they didn't tamper with nothing. No China, no Russia, no tampering, no Romania, no hackers, no, you know, extra ballots. The state, that, we don't have to audit the votes in that state. Everything's on the up and up. We were totally perfect. America is perfect because Biden won. And what I like to 
to call the shoe on my other foot. And I really feel sorry for Hannity because these news guys are like, what if it was Trump and all these examples? And it's like, I'm, I really feel sorry for you because it's just, life is unfair. That's just the way it is. Now, November 2020, and dang it, if Orange Man didn't squeak through again, he threaded the needle and beat Biden, which was, you know, against everybody's prediction because Biden's such a strong candidate. And uh, the same thing was happening. There was all these discrepancies all over the place. Romania, uh, whatever. Stacks of absentee ballots and stacks of mail-in ballots and COVID. And... Now, you're going to tell me that the Democrats wouldn't be howling to the moon every single day, 24 hours a day, they open up new news stations, new networks to complain and howl about the election being a fraud. And everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. So don't even, don't even, don't start with me with that. It's fucking, I mean, I don't want to use that word. It's really annoying. Yeah, the election was perfect. Everything was perfect. Oh, my God. I'll get in 16 minutes. I get up on a rampage, and then I'm going to get angry. So I'm going to call it a day. I think I said enough about that. I mean, the hypocrisy, you can't you know, fill up the cloud with hypocrisy. You can't talk about it all. But it'll crop up here and again. I'm going to use the old impunicrit. I like that. Impunicracy. It's hard to say with my teeth, but I like those words. They fit better. It's evil, treacherous, curse. So, um, I'll talk to you later. Um, that, was, that was good. I enjoyed it. Um, have a good night, everybody.